Hello and welcome to What Do You Do With a BA in Theater? Presented by Dallas Summer Musicals Education and Community Partnerships Department. My name is Seth Johnson and I'll be your host for this series. Please welcome our special guest, Olivia Grace Murphy. Hi, oh, I'm talking now. Hi, I'm Olivia Grace Murphy. Um, I'm a local theater artist in DFW. Um, and then I also do customer service. That's my dog in the background. Hi. Never apologize for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey, come here. Come here. She she's picking the loudest toys. She does this. Okay, so my my regular job, it's not regular, like I call it like my muggle job. Um, so I do customer service for education software. So I basically spend most of my day talking to teachers. Um, and I think my dog gets jealous when she knows I'm talking to people because she picks the loudest toy in the room to play with. <laughs> I, like every time without fail. And um so yeah, that's what she's doing right now. So if you hear squeaking or if you hear bones, that's a my dog. That's terrible though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and so I went to school at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida. I grew up there um, in Melbourne Beach, which is kind of southeast of Orlando, um, and I loved it there. So I got a BFA in acting with a minor in music. Awesome. And uh, when you were uh pursuing your degree, uh, what caused you to choose uh, University of Florida? Were there any kind of like specific draws for you? Mm -hmm. um, um, so I actually was in between choosing the University of Central Florida, which is where I went, and Oklahoma City University. And um, my grandma got really sick and I'm very close to her. I'm actually named after her. Her name was Grace. Uh, and she got really sick my senior year. And so I was like, well, I'll go close, which UCF was only an hour and a half away, um, as opposed to going to a whole nother state. And I was like, if I need to transfer at the end of the year, then I can. Um, I actually started off with an opera degree, which I changed after my first year. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it was actually nice because I love the city of Orlando. And my recommendation for anyone who's looking at colleges right now is um, don't just look at the college, look at the city, because that's where you're going to be living for four years, in my case, five. Um, so I, I loved it there. I love the city. Uh, I even stayed there for a little over a year after I got my degree. Um, I worked in theme parks as a performer, and that was a lot of fun. I loved it. Um, but it's just not what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And so I actually after that, got an opportunity to work for the Kinky Boots First National Tour as their merchandise manager, which is how I ended up in Dallas. We went to a lot of different cities. I was just looking to leave Orlando because, you know, I lived there my whole life. And um, I finished up my little bit of the tour that I worked on and then uh, kind of packed up my car and drove to Dallas. And I've been here ever since. Wow. So yeah. um, why Dallas? Did it just stick out to you in the tour or... Yeah, so not only was it a really cool city, we were here for two weeks. Um, so I got to know it pretty well when I was on tour because you know I wasn't just gonna stay in my hotel room. Like I loved going out with the actors and the um, the tech crew, and we would you know just go out and have fun and 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 see what the each new city had to offer. So I loved that part of it. But then also it was really obvious to me what a brimming art scene. Uh, Dallas had because one of the great things about going on a tour is you kind of get to um, like rub elbows with local performers and kind of see like what you know their life is like in that city and so I it was it was really eye-opening coming from um, a place where I think there's three professional theaters in Orlando and then looking at Dallas and you know we have so many equity houses and then non-equity companies and community theaters and it's this entire metroplex of art and artists who are really welcoming of each other and it was just so foreign in such a great way for me um it was like oh this is a community that i've kind of been looking for um and so for me i feel like it was a, a really really good move yeah. Um, I mean, I agree. I love having you here. Um, that sounds very overwhelming at points. <laughs> and like, how do you start? How do you start when you get to a new city and um, don't know anybody and you want to pursue a career in theater? Um, so I knew one person, actually, uh, my friend Claire, who actually lives in Boston now. She is a drama teacher. Um, at the time, she worked for the AT&T Performing Arts Center. 
and we were getting tacos and I was like, I have no idea what to do. Um, when I was in Orlando, I worked at a card company in the shipping department and I was one of the managers there and it only has one physical location, which is in Orlando. And so I couldn't like transfer jobs. So she got me hooked up with the at and Performing Arts Center, which um, not only was it a great first job here um, because they gave me a lot of part-time hours, but um, a lot of people who work there are theater artists. And so I kind of got to get the lay of the land and they told me uh, this is where you look for auditions and like these are the companies you have to go to. I actually was selling tickets for the Dallas Theater Center at the time so I got to see a lot of their shows for free which was a really great benefit coming here and being able to see art from you know a now Tony Award winning company um, that's in the city that I was living in and it was I think that they're a really great standard of what art regional theater is in the United States and also what the rest of us Dallasites kind of strive for with our art in in terms of um, importance and audience draw and magnetism and I just think that it was really good for me at the time to have that resource and then I'd be able to go see shows at Titus or Dallas Black, Dallas Black Dance Theater and all of these different like Dallas staples. It was really cool that right away I kind of was um, thrown into the arts mix. And so it was, it was really beneficial looking back on it, having my first job be in the theater community here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That definitely opens so many doors. It's all about connections. It really is making sure you maintain uh, those professional connections with the people you work with and helping each other out. Cause I mean, the arts world is um, not easy all the time. <laughs> it's, yeah. But it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, in, in high school or high school college, um, one of my theater professors was like, the most important thing you do in your day-to-day -day life as a performer and as an artist is networking. And I was like, well, crud, I'm not good at networking. I don't know how to walk up to people and be like, hello, I am a performer. How can I associate with you? So I always thought that I was really terrible at this. Um, and then I learned that the way to network is just by being nice to people and genuinely interested in what they're doing. Um, so that's, that's another great part of quarantine is uh, your, your husband sometimes walks in when you're in the middle of giving an interview uh, <laughs> um, and then your dog goes crazy. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, oh, networking! Yeah, um, so networking is important, but really I think that the, the biggest part of it is just listening to another person and relating to them. And then, I mean, if you get along with someone, that's someone that you might want to work with artistically or just be friends with. Um, you, you never know the kind of people who you're going to run into. And so my philosophy is just like, be kind to everyone. Yeah, that's that's how we met professionally. We uh, did, yeah. yeah. Just through friends of friends and being nice to each other and then starting a theater company together and um, all the, the wonderful things that come with that. Yeah. Uh, so how does your um, muggle job um, help you as a theater artist? So I actually love my muggle job. Um, so I work for Edmentum, which is a company that provides software for teachers. And it's really important right now because um, everyone is switching to e-learning. Mm -hmm. And so um, our, my job is kind of blowing up right now. Uh, and I think that... Um, my job requires a level of kindness and empathy that I think that as a theater artist, you're kind of, it's kind of ingrained in you because you're watching all of these wonderful stories about people and you're, you know, directing or performing or, or helping to create that story. So you already kind of get in the mindset of other people. And I think part of helping people in a customer service aspect is you relate to them and, and you have to kind of get it. And the more that you, you know, you get what they're going through, the better you can help them. Um, and then also, I mean, there's a bit of improv to my job. So, you know, you never know what someone's going to say ever. So <laughs> there's, um, yeah, definitely that, that bit of improvisation there. Yeah. So um, with both of the jobs, within the theater world and, and the muggle scene, uh, what are some of your favorite things about both of them? 
So I think the great thing about being an artist is that you're a person first. Um, you know, I think the only way to be a good artist is to be um, well lived. And I worked in a theater for a while. I was the box office associate at Dallas Children's Theater, which I loved and I love, love, love that theater. Um, but there is definitely, I think, less creativity for me in my outside life, um, my, my theater life because I was at a theater all day long and helping with the marketing and, and ticket sales and, and just kind of living in that life. And that's really hard to do every day, seven days a week from sunup to sundown. It's, it's really difficult to do. So I find a lot of times um, now that I have a job outside of the theater that pays my bills, um, that I have more creativity in the evenings. And so I, I'm actually a, a better artist. And so I think that the two kind of like, it's, it's like yin and yang really for me. Um, and I would like to get to a point where my sole job is in the theater arts, but it's, it's also something that's fulfilling me creatively and intellectually as mm -hmm. well as financially. Um, I mean, that's really the, the goal for everyone. Um, but I would say that, you know, any job you take is a stepping stone and it's, it's a life lesson and it's, it's something that becomes part of you. And yeah, so, so I'd like to think that, you know, it's not just like survival job, the day job, like it, it definitely like it's, it benefits me and I benefit it. So yeah. What were some of the things you were looking for when you were trying to find this job? Oh, um, so my, my day job? Yeah. Uh, respect. So I, my biggest piece of advice that I can give to anyone looking for a job is look for a company that you're going to enjoy working for. If you go in and the people interviewing you are really nice and it seems like a really good atmosphere, great. I would say that that is almost more important than the pay or the commute or anything. Um, which I bet all these high school kids watching this right now are like, Oh, I'm not gonna have, not, not gonna have to deal with that for forever, but um, so I for me like I love really where I work and the people that I work with and my company has a really great goal. Um, they're so kind to their employees. Uh, like right now because of uh, quarantine and COVID nineteen, they're actually offering six free online therapy sessions to every employee. Okay. They're like, hey, it's hard right now, so here's something we can do to help you guys and. Um, every payday, it's ice cream Friday, like just silly stuff that seems so small, but it like, it really helps your day to day. And, you know, I agree. If you're happy in the place you work 40 hours a week, you're, you're generally going to be happier. I 100% agree. I, I feel like when I found my job at Dallas Summer Musicals, it was that that click like, oh, this is the environment I want to be working mm -hmm. at. Now that uh, all this quarantine and shelter in place um things are happening. I'm looking back at some of the old jobs that I worked at and I'm like, you're just now like shutting down. <laughs> like, at Dallas Summer Musicals, I was, uh, I was working from home for a couple of weeks um, yeah. because they cared about their employees and they care about people, people, um, which yeah. I think theater practitioners definitely have that as a strength is that they really do care about um, the person first. Uh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. You can't put a price tag on respect. You really can't. And that, and that applies to every aspect of your life and, and every relationship you have, whether it's um, professional, personal, family, artistic, romantic, respect always comes first. Absolutely. Well, that was kind of my last question, but I'm going to ask it again. Um, if there is any piece of advice that you could give your younger self or somebody who is graduating high school, uh, looking for colleges and different career paths, what would you tell them? I guess other than respect. <laughs> other than respect. Um, I think definitely what I said earlier about you are a person first and your artist self is a part of that. Um, I was getting kind of down on myself the other day that I haven't really been creating in, in quarantine. I've just kind of been surviving. Um, and then I kind of had to, you know, quiet that voice and be like, no, 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 you're, you're taking care of your person right now. And mm -hmm. if, if you can create a person that you're proud to be, um, and that you feel is well-rounded, intelligent, compassionate, um, down to earth, uh, 
then I think everything else just shines out from there. Artistic, professional. Yeah. Be be a be a, a whole human. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of theater artists, especially who they're an actor. They're an actor, and that is their personality. It's the only thing they can talk about. I mean, it's the, their whole grind is that. And and definitely, I respect that because every person is different. But I know for me, um, if if I can have a conversation with someone that's about anything other than theater then we're off to a good start. I love talking about theater and I love it more than anything in the whole world. Um, but it's just, it's, it's not all there is. So. Well, that is yeah. fantastic advice, Olivia. Um, at this point in our video, I would like to welcome our special musical guest, which we will insert right here. They think up stories that link my name with yours. Why do the neighbors gossip all day behind their doors? Grant and you wish I carved our initials on that tree. Just keep a slice of all the advice you give so free. Don't pray. My charm too much. Don't look so vain with me. Don't stand in the rain with me. People will see. Yeah, and it was great. Oh, I love that. Woo! Oh my goodness. Fantastic. <laughs> Olivia, thank you so much for uh, spending your time with us today, uh, for giving us your You are so welcome. Story, um, sharing your stories and uh, helping other artists is one of the greatest things that we can do as humans and as theater practitioners. Um, so I encourage you to keep telling your stories, keep looking for the place that respects you and uh, makes you a better person. And remember that Dallas Summer Musicals is a resource for you. We want to help you as much as possible. Um, so reach out, send us an email. Uh, let us know what kind of content you want to see. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. We're happy to help. We're happy to answer those. Stay safe, wash your hands, social distance, and have a wonderful day. Bye.